Hello, a warm welcome to you. This is Nationwide, I'm Ruth Aguela. President Bola Tinubu has departed Doha for Nigeria this morning after his state visit to Qatar. This was after holding bilateral meetings with the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thanin, while also witnessing the signing of bilateral agreements covering several sectors of the economy. And on the sideline of um, those meetings, Nigeria Qatar Business Forum, we hear that Nigeria is hoping for a prospective investment worth billions of dollars from young Qatari investors across various sectors. That was a major outcome of an engagement between Nigerian young investors and their Qatari counterparts. The engagement on the sidelines of the Nigeria Qatar Business Forum was at the instance of the Nigerian Minister of Youth Development, Jamila Ibrahim. The minister says the interface has been successfully used to convince the young Qatari international investors about the new climate for ease of doing business in Nigeria. And the Qatar Nigeria Business Council. And um, this engagement is looking very promising and has a lot of prospects of matching successfully the Nigerian entrepreneurs looking seeking investments and potential Qatari investors in sectors such as fintech, agriculture, manufacturing and oil and gas. And there's potential actually of a hundred billion dollar investment in the near future. We're leveraging on the MOUs that were signed between Nigeria and Qatar. Uh, we hope that um, we have a smooth implementation of this on the memorandum. A look at all the issues, head of the civil service of the Federation, Folasha de Yemieson, is seeking avenues of collaboration with the United Kingdom for student exchange programs. Hammond Javani reports that the mayor of London Borough of Southwark, Michael Sito, who is on a working visit with his team, were received by the permanent secretary, career management office, office of the head of the civil service of the Federation. The visit to Nigeria aims to seek areas of partnership in both sides of the continent. It also geared towards finding ways for mutual benefit of both countries and understanding the educational landscape of Nigeria and how the two countries can share best practices. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, who was represented, said education for all is a responsibility for all and the government wants to do everything possible that Nigerians at all levels are well educated to make themselves contribute positively to societal development. She appreciated the mayor for focusing on secondary school students as beneficiaries of the exchange program as they are the future of the service. She said nurturing them at this stage will ease their transition into the public service in the future. The head of the civil service of the Federation noted that the first pillar of the Federal Civil Service Strategy and Implementation Plan FCC 25 places high premium on human capacity development and talent management, adding that learning is an unending adventure. Across board, our target has already been the fact that some of our children are not in school and some of them are also finding Mayor C2 says the program will cut across all areas of public service and other contemporary issues. What cuts across all areas of public service provided by the uh, government, uh, either the local level or the national level, or by the civil service, or in all in all areas of life is education. When you have an educated Workforce, you have a productive workforce. Administrator, Chief Executive Officer, Public Service Institute of Nigeria, Abdul Ganiu Obatonyibo, appreciated the mayor for being a man of his words, having fulfilled his promise to visit Nigeria and for doing the country proud. He stressed that education is directly linked with knowledge, and without it, skills and information will be of no value. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Well, as Nigeria grapples with the aftermath of economic shocks, the United Nations has stepped forward to extend a helping hand. This is as the United Nations resident coordinator in Nigeria, 
assured of the organization's readiness to explore all available channels to help Nigeria mitigate the effects of the current economic downturn, especially on the vulnerable population. The UN envoy, who was on a Katsi visit to Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, said the partnership will enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of interventions. I see a kind of need for us to go in this direction. And if this is a direction that is retained by the government, I wanted to guarantee you and assure you that I, one of my first action in this country would be to bring together all the assets that exist in the UN. And this will help to make more visible any actions that government takes in this direction of reducing the impact of this economic shock. Yes, we are facing temporal crisis occasioned by developments to the global economy. How can the UN system help? It can help in it can help any leader who is undertaking reform to communicate that reforms can be necessary must when the sorry reforms necessary reforms may be felt. But more importantly, that a country or a populace like to be assured we are not alone. The Central Bank of Nigeria and the West African Institute for Financial and Economic Management, that is WAVEM, is partnering to build capacity on medium-term debt management with a view to strengthen the economies of the West African sub-region. To this end, a regional manpower development was organized by the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund and WAFAM in Abuja. Let's hear more from Musa Abubakar. The 87.91 trillion Naira debt. Nigeria is at the high risk of debt distress, like many African countries. The training by the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and WIFM is aimed at equipping participants from Gambia, Ghana, Liberia, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone on debt management strategy with a view to assist the West African countries to design a borrowing plan. This is by taking into consideration the cost and risk associated with the existing debt and the future debt that they are likely going to borrow. Nigeria must remain vigilant, especially regarding potential liquidity risk. If not adequately addressed, these risks could arise from weak revenue mobilization, a persistent challenge undermining debt sustainability and economic stability. By carefully strategizing their borrowing and requirements and options, countries can achieve their debt management objectives of minimizing, minimizing borrowing costs and mitigating the risk associated with market instability. The training is expected to enable participants with skills to look at existing portfolios and pipeline loans and help their countries to design its borrowing plan going forward. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. The National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress says it is prepared to regularly interface with ministries, departments and agencies in the implementation of President Tinubu's Renewed Hope Agenda. The committee, led by Dr. Abubakar Sadiq Fakai, says the party will not close its eyes and wait until it is time for another campaign before assessing the performance and progress of MDAs in line with the promises made to Nigerians during the vote second period. It's a party that has the manifestos that campaigned to form the government. So the head of agencies are the people executing those promises. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So there is need for you people to come very close to the party so that you can, if you have your advices to the party in government, and also party has its own advice to you in order to achieve all the promises that this administration has made for the people during the campaign and close the gap. We want to make sure that available electricity, most of the generation, in this country, they are stranded at the power plants. 
because of so many problems along the way that will not allow the generation to get to end users. And we said, no, whereas the end users are diverse, the country is big, but industries, we can find cl clusters and ensure that we clear this bottlenecks along the way, be it transmission, be it distribution, or be it collection, whatever it is. Navigation was uh, the National Integrated Power Project, where the party appreciates efforts put in place by the agency in putting necessary infrastructure on ground for achieving improved electricity supply in Nigeria. Cherry news for residents of Abiyokuta as the Yogun state government is set or rather targeting no fewer than 70,000 residents for free medical surgery as palliative through its health insurance scheme initiative, of course. Hakim Juma will tell us more about that. Hello, here, Mr. Owuru, a civil servant who retired from Ogun State Ministry of Health 14 years ago, was diagnosed of cataracts in her eyes, hence the need for her to undergo eye surgery. Her hope seems to be lost when she could not afford the bills for the operation. Soccer eventually came away when Ogun State Governor Dakpo Habiadun rolled out an intervention program of free medical surgery that covers all kinds of ailments for no fewer than 70,000 residents. The free medical intervention by Ogun State Government cuts across the three senatorial districts of Ogun State. In Abekuta, the Ogun State capital, these patients came to be part of the gesture. Mrs. Owuru and other beneficiaries are grateful to God and Ogun State Government for the gesture. With the situation of financial stress in the country, and uh, this one is now done free, people are very happy. So when I came here, what I saw really amazed me. Governor Habiodun, who was represented, believes that the welfare and well-being of the people are key in the quest to move the state forward. They will be accessing free health care, even if they have malaria, hypertension, diabetes, whatever the ailment. Every one of these 70,000 people will have the free health insurance card that will give them access to those care across Ogun State. For the pregnant woman, once they get registered in this scheme, we are going to cater for them till they deliver. The initiative covers all the aspects of medical services from registration through consultation to medication and will run in February next year in Abelkuta, Akim Jimo, NTN News. Highly commendable, you would say. So let's hook up with our correspondent, Lekon Agbonde. Um, he's going to tell us more on the free medical surgery happening in Abiyokuta. He's presently at Ogun State General Hospital. Um, Lekon, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome to Abiyokuta, the Ogun State capital. You can see behind me are uh, the beneficiaries of the medical intervention of the state government. The state government under the leadership of Prince Dakwo Abiodun understands what the earth of the people means in building the wealth of a nation and the wealth of individuals. That is why the government put this uh, intervention in place to ensure that people who are not uh, able to uh, access uh, these uh, uh, medical uh, facilities uh, do so with the help of the state government. And behind me are the people who are here at the uh, state hospital here in uh, Belkuta. And this kind of uh, exercise is across the 20 local government in Ogun State. Talking about Abel Kuta in particular, uh, when I asked the uh, MD of this state, state hospital, he told me that about 1,600 1, people have registered already and they, they are going through a screening to ensure that people who are, who are eligible, uh, who, are, who have the, the, the strength to go through the surgery will the surgery will be performed on them and the, the kind of surgery, uh, the minor and major ones will be performed on those who need uh, this thing. And also, it, it, it is making things uh, very easy, especially when we talk about assessment of, of health. And 
reach like this for those people who are unable to, to, do, to do so, to have it free of charge, courtesy of the, uh, the state government. Also, when we talk about uh, uh, the when we talk about uh, the intervention like this, uh, it also makes things easy for uh, the people who are assessing it. Uh, due to uh, advancement in uh, technology and not only that the research activities have also improved and people are no more afraid of going under this knife to undergo surgery to get their health back and uh, also the medical director also told me that about 70 people have been operated upon so far and the exercise will continue till the end of March. Wow. Very impressive, Lacon. Health, they say, it is wealth. And it's a good initiative the Ogun State Government has taken. I'm sure the people are very excited and willing to be part of this initiative. Our correspondent there from Abiyokuta giving us update on the free medical surgery, the intervention by the state government. We turn to health, or still on health, rather. Um, we're going to another state, Nigeria was declared polio-free, if you recall, in 2020. Now, there is, however, a variant of the polio virus currently in circulation. What is the situation? And what has been done to halt the spread? Let's hear from Bashir Ibrahim Nababa. From World Polio Virus in 2020, there were, however, reports of the circulating variant polio virus in some parts of the country in which Sokoto recorded 61 cases of the disease. Flagging of the vaccination exercise, Sultan of Sokoto Mohammed Saad Abu Bakr represented appreciate efforts of World Health Organization and UNICEF and other development partners towards safeguarding health of the Nigerian child. <laughs> Representatives of the World Health Organization and UNICEF and other development partners describe the number of cases reported as alarming and call for enhanced collaborations to address the situation. We urge you to do everything that you can uh, to support this mission and this campaign and to make sure that every single child will get the vaccine that they need. The vaccination exercise is targeting 80% of children from 0 to 5 years from Sokoto. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. Well, we hear the Sultanate Council is leading that campaign uh, against the polio virus, the new variant discovered. So we're joining our correspondent now, Usman Mohammed Binji. Um, he's at the Sultan's Palace in Sokoto. Um, please, Mohammed, fill us in. What's the situation? Well, Ruth, is good to see you. You are welcome to Sokoto, the seat of the Caliphate. Well, it will be interesting to know that uh, it was in 2020 that Nigeria was declared free of wild polio virus. But as time goes on, specifically in 2021, there was a resurgence of uh, a new variant of polio virus, which is usually called polio virus type 2. And that in form, it was really a, a source of concern to parallel government and development partners. Even in 2022, Nigeria notified around 1,028 cases of uh, the new uh, variant polio virus. And of course, that one uh, really uh, was a serious setback to the health of Nigerian child. That informed or prompted the decision of government and development partners to come up with new measures aimed at uh, uh, checking the spread of the virus. According to experts, such virus, if not uh, interrupted, is capable of also paralyzing or even killing the infected uh, children. Just uh, in South Dakota State, uh, uh, records indicate that there are 61 cases of the new uh, polio virus, a uh, new variant of our polio virus. On Friday, precisely, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr, represented by Wazir in Sokoto, Professor Sambawali Junet, plug up a routine vaccination with a view to ensuring that uh, 
every eligible child is vaccinated. The brief ceremony was of course attended by government officials and WHO, UNICEF and other development partners. In his speech, I can recall the Sultan emphasized on the need for, for good environmental sanitation, expressing the firm belief that that one alone is, uh, will help greatly to check the spread of the uh, disease. So as at now, as at present, the campaign is going on, the advocacy is going on, and the uh, Sokhtasar government has given its weights that it will do everything possible to ensure that the variant is tackled. So in brief, that is what is happening in Sokhtasar regarding the new uh, variant. Okay, Usman, thank you very much for that update. And it's a good thing um, that the Sultanate Council is leading this advocacy. Very important. It will encourage mothers, you know, to participate and bring their children for immunization. Thank you very much, Usman. Thank you very much. All right, we're on to other issues. The 33 Artillery Brigade of the Nadran Army, Bauchi, has held its annual West African Social Activities, you know it as WASA, which is an avenue to appreciate army officers and men for their doggedness in the fight against criminal activities. Awel Abdullahi reports that the annual event also provides a platform for socialization between families, friends and the general public. <laughs> The West African Social Activities, known as WASA, is an annual event organized by the Nigerian Army to celebrate the diverse rich cultural heritage of the country. The event brings together officers, soldiers and their families in a relaxed atmosphere to celebrate and mark the end of their 2023 activities. Talk of war contest between the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force and women in the barracks as well as core members took part of the social events. The aim is to strengthen the cordial relationship between the personnel and civilians. Year 2023 was a little scary the spirit of unity, empathy and understanding way beyond this event. Let us be ambassadors of inclusivity, respect for both the military, the civil populace, and the broader community. Lighting of bonfire is the symbol of the celebration led by the State Deputy Governor, Mohamed Awal Jato. Award were presented to some deserving personnel in a variety of ways of cultural display by the troops. <laughs> in Bauchi, Awal Abdullahi, NTA News. From the judiciary sin, the establishment of the lower courts is to aid access to justice by the vast majority of the people at a grassroots level. The development is to maintain law and order in society. Our judiciary correspondent Delia Tumbi takes a look at the magistrate court as court of first instance against the backdrop of the ongoing refresher course for magistrates and judges of the lower courts in Abuja. Magistrate courts in Nigeria are the most important courts while talking about criminal justice system as more than 90% of criminal cases that get tried commence in the court and 80% of those cases terminate in the magistrate courts. For quick disposition of justice at this level, the judicial officers are not only expected to possess adequate knowledge of the law, practice and procedure, but such knowledge must be up to date. This is the rationale for the ongoing refresher course with the team repositioning the lower courts for quick dispensation of justice. These courts are the proximate and ultimate courts that are readily accessible to citizens at the grassroots. This strategic positioning invariably gives the lower courts a most crucial and all-important role in the justice system one that cannot be underestimated. Repositioning the lower courts for quick dispensation of justice seeks to draw attention of the participants to key aspects and areas of substantive or procedural law 
that will enable them to discharge their duties more effectively and efficiently. The hybrid refresher course is a platform for participants from different jurisdictions to exchange ideas and share vital experiences. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. And more news from the judiciary scene, but let's cross over to Lagos to join Michael. He'll guide us from that end. The High Court sitting in Ikoi, Lagos, has struck out the case filed against 19 borough the change operators. Bolaja can report that the action followed the decision of the prosecutor and inspector general of police, Kadia Yotoku, to withdraw the case from the court. The matter which came up for hearing before Justice Alagua saw all the defendants appearing in person during the appearances call, there were double representation of counsel to some of the defendants. Commenting on this, Justice Alagua says double representation does not affect the purpose of taking a plea. Shortly after this, counsel to the prosecutor Umaru Belo informed the judge the decision of the prosecutor to discontinue the case, and Justice Alagua immediately struck out the case. This decision was welcomed with great joy by the defendants. <laughs> It's a, it's a welcome development. So we'll pursue the matter and then get our money with them. We know we have some currencies that they were seized, so we'll, we'll as well go and claim it. Then we'll be following, we'll be abiding by the law. The 19 bureau the changer operators were arrested for allegedly operating illegally. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. For the continued existence of the middle class in Nigeria, there is need for government to take initiatives that will rekindle Nigeria's manufacturing sector, which produced many middle class citizens in the early 80s. Economic experts say this is the panacea to the depletion of the middle class in Nigeria. Joe Popola has the report. There is no gain saying that the middle class plays a pivotal role in the economic development of any nation. Armed with the purchasing power and prospects of job creation through MSMEs, expert proceed that the middle class is the lifeline of major economies. While various national and international financial organizations have their yardsticks for measuring poverty rates, including those in the middle class, amidst the current value of the Naira analysts say the middle class has been shrinking while doubting if they are still existing at all. Captains of industry Businessmen who are very wealthy will always be at the top there. But right after them, you still have, um, you know, people who are on the average. Uh, they can pay their bills, they have a nice car, they have accommodation. It might not be in Ekoyi, it might be uh, in some other places. So the, the middle class is still there. What has happened is that it has shrunk the volume of people that used to be in that belt, shrunk dramatically part of the middle class, you have the ultra rich, very rich, and the extremely poor. Those are the two classes now we have in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the income remains static and stagnant. For Many Nigerians are oblivious of which category they belong to, but they are offered the narrative which change for good. Poor will always be, so they will always be the poor. So my point is, for me, there is no middle class. Diversification of the nation's economy, especially rejuvenating the manufacturing sector and strengthening of the Naira, are salient suggestions of stakeholders to bring back the middle class to where it used to be. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NT News. Time for some messages and when we return, Nationwide continues in Makadi. is adopting a holistic approach through meaningful engagement with local and international donors in addressing concerns surrounding internally displaced persons in the state. Governor Hassan Alia stated this when he received a delegation of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, who are on a, an assessment visit to the state. Elias Itiab reports. The United Nations Development Program, UNDP, is one of the leading partners in the provision of emergency and humanitarian assistance as over 70 million persons across the globe are displaced as a result of conflicts, 
disasters and climate change. Senior advisor UNDP on solutions to internet displacement said the humanitarian support initiative is being implemented in 15 countries globally, including Nigeria, with Benue as one of the four benefiting states. And our colleagues from the UN Development Program in the Legislative Office uh, guided us to come to Benue and see how we can work together with the government to, uh, to see how we can help solve this challenge of this place. Governor Hyacinth Alia, represented by the Deputy Governor Sam Ode, who decried the humanitarian concerns occasioned by displacement, said the state government is adopting a holistic approach in providing a long-lasting solution to the issues. Our success will depend on our ability to work together with you to collaborate and harness the collective wisdom and resources of our society. Together we can make a difference in the life of those who are affected by displacement and build a more inclusive and a resilient society for all of us. The UNAP team is to work with the implementation committee comprising different stakeholders for the execution of the program in the state. In Makudi, Elias, ETF, NT News. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has reiterated its commitment in safeguarding critical national assets in the country. Commandant General NSCDC Ahmed Abubakar Audi said this at the passing out parade of the 2022 regular intake basic training on internal security, counter-terrorism and insurgency course in Makudi. Blessing Omeche Ibuti reports that the Commandant General was represented by the Assistant Commandant General in charge of Zone H, Cyprian Wanuku Namdi. I, I do solemnly promise that was the oath of secrecy being administered by the legal officer on the new 2022 intake of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps Benue State Command, signifying their total commitment to the service. Having completed months of rigorous training, the 104 regular intake of the NSCDC Benue State Command are now set for the tax ahead of them. They were trained in basic drills, arms handling, field craft and technical maneuvers, on armed physical combat, disaster management, counterterrorism and insurgency. I hereby charge you to be good ambassadors of the Corps in protecting lives and protecting critical national assets. You have all done what is required of you and given far more your decision to enlist in the counter-terrorism unit and join the fight against forces of disruption threatening the lives and value of Nigerians as shown in you. Our country will go back to safe hands. As part of activities marking the passing out parade, Various displays such as stripping and dismantling of rifles, tug of war, and others were carried out by the graduates. Certificates were also presented to their instructors and some of the graduates. The event also commemorated the International Civil Defense Day, which is marked 1st of March annually. In Makudi, Blessing Omecha Ibute, NTA News. And that's our package from Makudi. It's back to Ruth in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you very much, Susan. The need for deliberate efforts at policy implementation that will harness the enormous potential of Nigerian engineers as solutions for sustainable development was emphasized on NTS Good Morning Nigeria. With every aspect of livelihood dependent on engineering, the guests were of the opinion that prioritizing engineering is synonymous with sustainable development in all sectors. Lydia Samson reports. Nigerian engineers abroad are not just competently developing other economies but excelling and raising the bar. Ironically, their colleagues back home, equally competent, are battling needless challenges occasioned by policy decisions and implementations. Today we cannot run a refinery. I mean, does that, uh, what has that got to do with engineers? It was engineers who were, Nigerian engineers doing all that at that time. And it was so in various other sectors. Steel, Nigerians produce steel here. 
But the problem, like I said again, it is policy. You cannot build an industry and starve the place of working capital. Where you have Nigerian engineers, they, they do deliver you know, on their job as they should, maintaining all the ethics and um, standards that are required for the engineering profession. Yes, I, I would say that engineering, en Nigerian engineers, both home and abroad, yes. who I represent, are doing well. The issue of uh, marine surveyors should be looked into because uh, in Nigeria we are lacking those areas, a very limited number of So I think in their curriculum, I would like to uh, the two uh, presidents to look into the issue of marine surveying in Nigeria and the training that has to do with that. I encourage them to improve their skills, their proficiencies, uh, their competencies uh, in, in delivering what uh, God has made them to be. Appeal to government for a legal framework to strengthen investment in engineering services across the value chains. The guys reiterated the need for engagement of Nigerian engineers. Instead of the engagement of expatriates doing jobs Nigerian engineers are capable of. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And you can take away the aspect of engineering and infrastructure. So let's find out what's happening in Patakot in line with that as we join Jenny Bassi. Okay, thank you very much, Ruth. The Minister of Works, David Omayi, has expressed satisfaction over the progress of rehabilitation work being carried out at the Port Harcourt Aba Enugu Road and the element axis of the east-west road. He expressed his views after inspecting the project. Marian Vincent Oko has details. The visit of the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, to Portakot Aba Enugu Road and the LMA axis of the East-West Road is part of due diligence being carried out to ensure that the project meets quality and standard in line with job specification. The Aba Portakot section covers about 41.4 kilometers. While the Portacot subsection of the project has progressed to a asphalting stage with vehicles already plying some parts of the road, the Aba section was still in deplorable state, which prompted the minister's suspension of the contract a few weeks ago. With this visit, however, the minister expressed satisfaction with the effort so far made and revoked the suspension earlier served the contractor. Uh, in Aba section being done by Arab contractor, and the Arab contractor, you know, within the next uh, two months would have finished one carriageway fully. Then it remains uh, five kilometers on the other carriageway. And so we also have issue of uh, being owed by the past administration. But in confidence and in trusting the president, ask them to go back to work. And they're back to work and they will make an effort on how to get money for them. The minister also inspected the LMA axis of the east-west road covering 15 kilometers, where he also expressed confidence in the use of concrete, which he says will ensure durability. He further commended the River State Controller of Works in Werama Tarilade for effective supervision. With the progress so far recorded, it is expected that the project will be delivered within record time. In Port Harcourt, Marian Vincent Oko. NTA News. Still talking infrastructure, the Port Harcourt Aba Railway Service is to begin operation by the end of March 2024. This comes as the Nigerian Railway Corporation links Onep Port for effective service delivery. Kingsley Amajuri reports. The Port Harcourt Aba section of Port Harcourt Maiduguri Rail Network has been undergoing rehabilitation an initiative of the federal government to help mitigate the rising cost of transportation for Nigerians. This inspection visit by the Managing Director of Nigerian Railway Corporation, Fidet Okira, is to ascertain the level of work done so far. No, we will be able to run at least carry people from our Port Harcourt to our bar by the end of the month. Uh, for the Port Harcourt linking, they are doing that. We left some people there working there. This evening, they will come up with the design team will come up with the timeline to connect from the point just ahead here into the port. The managing director, however, noted that there will be price adjustment when the train service 
begins by the end of this month. Uh, we are working with relevant security, not just in uh, Port Harcourt, about uh, Port Harcourt and Guru route. All over place we have line, uh, the, track, uh, the train service. We are trying to make sure that people who come on it and people who come to the station are safe. Uh -huh. We are also doing some military technology. The federal government, he added, is linking the One and Port Harcourt ports as measures to address the rising cost of haulage of goods and services from the ports in Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. That's it from Port Harcourt. Nationwide will continue in Sokoto after this break. In everyone, this is still Nationwide. Welcome to Sokoto. Zafra State Governor Dauda Lawal has flagged off the distribution of instructional materials to 250 public primary schools across the state. This is in furtherance of commitments to revive and improve the state basic education subsector. Jamilo Ibrahim reports. It is actually a boost for the Zamfara State Basic Education subsector as public primary and junior secondary schools in the state are beginning to massively take delivery of vital teaching and learning materials. The instructional materials worth millions of naira were made available to Zamfara State Universal Basic Education Board by the UBEC headquarters Abuja and the UNICEF. They include more than 242,000 textbooks, 200 play materials, 8,210 library materials, 25 tablets and 35 solar panels and batteries, among other things. Governor Doda Lawal, who flagged up the distribution of the items to 250 public primary and junior secondary schools across the state, said his administration is strengthening collaboration with the relevant stakeholders to revive and improve the state education sector. As an educationally advantaged state in Nigeria, Zamfara will continue to require such support and engagement from both the national and international partners in order to move education forward in our dear state. I wish to reiterate the determination of the State Universal Basic Education Board to implement effective strategies and relevant activities that enhance our teaching and learning environment. Education Secretaries for Gusau Anka, Bungudu, and Aranamo, the local government education authorities, are the first set to receive the materials for the benefiting schools in their respective areas. This will definitely help our teachers to teach effectively and inshallah we will see the result. We will ensure M and E monitoring and evaluation of all these materials after distribution. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. People with disabilities in Sokoto State have again appealed to the federal and state governments to provide facilities at public buildings to enable them access the places with ease, as contained in the Discrimination Against Persons with Disability Prohibition Act 2018. This came to the fore at a commemoration of the 2024 National Wheelchair Day organized by National Association of Persons with Physical Disabilities in Sokoto State Chapter. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa has more. The International Wheelchair Day was founded in 2008 to advocate improved accessibility and rights of wheelchair users across the world. People with physical disabilities in Sokoto are not left out in observing this year's celebrations to advance the cause of their members. Their main message is an appeal to government to, among other needs, domesticate the five-year-old glue that was signed by the immediate past administration of President Muhammad Buhari that seeks to promote rights of persons with disabilities in the country. While appreciating efforts of authorities for providing various incentives to members of the association, the participants appealed for more equity and social inclusion for the development of the state and country. Wheelchair plays a very important role in the lives of uh, people that need it. It gives them independence, it enables them to live uh, a fruitful and productive life because it serves as a means of movement, for persons with disability. We are calling on the government and the private sectors. They should provide accessibility for wheelchair users, the ramps, elevators and others, so that they can make their life very easy. The International Wheelchair Day was founded in the United Kingdom and has since been celebrated on the 1st of March every year. From Sokoto, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. 
Well, that's our package from Sokka to Nationwide. We'll continue with Ruth in Abuja. Thank you very much, Nana. As women across the globe continue to assert themselves and break barriers in global development efforts, the maiden edition of Global Women Breakfast was held in Borno State, focusing on the contribution of women to human development through science. Let's hear from Zainab Adam. This is the maiden edition of the Global Women's Breakfast in Borno State, a forum dedicated to celebrate women in science, form a network and encourage engagement and participation of women, especially in chemistry, among other branches of science. In their messages to the participants at the forum, state officials of the Chemical Society of Nigeria stressed that more women need to take up more productive role in development of science and science-oriented professions with a view to serving humanity in tune with current global expectations. It's really a welcome idea that we can come together, discuss science. We wish to do more. We want to see that our women are being promoted. We want to see that women are also in the forefront in decision making. They cited examples with the rise in diseases and the imperative of routine analysis of the efficacy of existing drugs, emphasizing that women chemists bear lots of life-saving roles, hence the urgency to propel the study of all sciences for the advancement of humanity. Further discussions centered on the role of artificial intelligence and research in medicine and a panel session on the theme catalyzing diversity in sciences to empower women. Artificial intelligence is a new power. It really shows me the way to manage my home and my career in chemistry. Participants at the event aligned with the vision of identifying the barriers that may discourage women from taking up chemistry and other sciences as professions. In Maiduguri, Zainab Adam, NTA News. Chairman CEO Nigerian and Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiriyerewa, joined all the stakeholders at the charity ball and fundraising of IA Foundation held in Lagos um, Civic Center. Organized as a means of raising funds towards getting out-of-school children back to school, Dabiri Erewa lauded the initiative as it complements government efforts in addressing the problem. She implored other women diasporans to emulate the initiative by giving back to the country and making a difference in the lives of the people. CEO IA Foundation Ibironke Adiagbo Solicited, solicited for support, stating that returning them to school would alleviate poverty, reduce insecurity, and result in enhanced skills which could be used to power the economy. And next is sports update.